Davis Weigel was born on August 8th, 2004, and he passed away on October 25th, 2004. He was born completely healthy, normal pregnancy. He, um, the day that he died, he was at his daycare, um, a normal Monday. I had kind of a gut feeling, um, kind of that mom's intuition the day that he passed away. Um, it was about my lunchtime, probably 12, 30, 1 o'clock. And there's just something that wanted, kind of made me want to call daycare and just kind of blew it off. I didn't, I didn't do it. Um, about 1 o'clock, I found out later that his daycare provider would be calling him, excuse me, would be feeding him. And um, he was a 14 pound baby at this time, um, pretty healthy for a two and a half month old. And he would generally eat about two ounces and then fall asleep and then wake right back up and eat the other six. So, you know, he was eating eight ounces by that point and um, sleeping great through the night, which was a mom's dream for a newborn or a first child. Um, he, <clears throat> so this day, particular day in October at daycare, he, about one o'clock, his daycare provider was feeding him and he ate his two ounces and I suspect fell asleep and she put him down. I, again, suspect that one of the other children at the daycare needed something from her. And um, so she put him down and th maybe thought that she would come back to him rather quickly. And um, maybe that rather quickly turned into an hour later. And when she came back to him, he wasn't breathing. Um, I later learned that when she put him down, she had put him down on his stomach on a down comforter that had been folded into quarters in a small bassinet. <clears throat> the autopsy report showed that he died of positional asphyxiation and suffocation. He did not die from SIDS. This was completely preventable. Um, today, Davis would be 11 years old. Um, we did have to go through court proceedings and um, different things with the DA's office. Um, my family did not press charges. Um, that would have been like going, trying to get blood from a turnip. So we I just participated with the DA's office. They were going to press charges regardless if I would participate or not. They said this just was not something that they could let go. Um, this was right before the holidays at this point, and so they had decided that, you know, they would do as much as they could at this point. She was originally charged with child neglect causing death as a felony. Um, Later found out that she also had been convicted of a previous felony of um, embezzlement. So she had been running this unlicensed daycare. And again, my suspicion is that she was running this unlicensed daycare to, um, I guess, run from paying back her fines or monies that she needed to pay back by not paying taxes. Um, 
So unfortunately, that was not able to be used in court. Um, she wasn't able, that unfortunately also the DA's office wasn't able to use that against her, which didn't help us at all. Um, when it came to give victim statements to the judge, he obviously was very favorable to listening to our, to the statements that came from our side. This unfortunately put a huge wedge in between our family as the daycare provider's sister was also my husband's aunt. Um, my niece also happened to have been in daycare there as well. And her mom took the side of the daycare provider, not the side of um, my family. She felt that what we were doing by pressing charges, and again, the DA was pressing charges, not my family, was wrong. So she felt that what we were doing was wrong. And it put a huge wedge in, into the family for quite some time. She, in the end, was charged with two months in a work release program six months of daily reporting to a, to the jail, and two years probation. My, I was given a life sentence. I'm not being able to see my child ever again. All I wanted for her was to not see her children to wake up every day for a period of time and know that she wouldn't see her children. That that simply wasn't possible for her to see her children or her grandchildren. Just like my, just like I couldn't, just like I was going through every day, just like my husband was going through every day, just like my mother was going through every day. Um, sadly, that didn't happen but a statement that will always stick out in my head from the court proceedings from the judge was I as an old man knows that know that you're not supposed to put a child on their stomach you as a daycare provider should know that you're not supposed to put a child on their stomach and if I could give you more I would give you more said but this is the most I can do she had taken a plea agreement with the DA's office, and every charge was reduced to a misdemeanor. Um, when I was looking for daycares, I was 24, 25 years old, and this was my first child. I didn't know that I was supposed to see a piece of paper that said she was licensed. Um, my niece and my two godsons went there. You know, she came, I had been there before. I picked them up. I, her sister was my husband's aunt. I didn't know that, that this would happen. Um, that was the only day he was going to be there that week, even. My mom was going to have him the rest of the week. And um, I just, if I would have called that day, he might still be here. Now my younger son knows he has a brother and he's in heaven. And the best thing that I can do is try and educate as many people as I can so that this doesn't happen to another family. Um, like I said before, this was not Sid's. But the closest thing that I can do to help another family is to work with as many groups as I can so this doesn't happen 
is to get everyone to be aware of the dangers of putting babies on their stomachs. And SIDS is, SIDS is very dangerous when it comes to babies and putting them on their backs is the safest way. And had she even been trained in the SIDS, this would have never have happened because this was a completely preventable accident. And I know she didn't do this maliciously, but had she had she not had nine kids in her care that day, something just pulled her in the wrong direction and she got busy and she just her attention was someplace else and I don't know that I can still at this point say that I forgive her um, I certainly will never forget and it's these types of events that keep our babies' memories alive.